we now want to look at the multiplication property of equality. If you are following along in your book, it calls this the division property. I don't like that because I want you guys to be prepared for what you're going to see in 0308 and 0310. And so this is the property that they use, the multiplication property. Now there can be a division aspect to this because division is a form of multiplication if you're paying attention. And the multiplication property says this, much the same way we have with the addition property, A equals B is equivalent to this. A times C equals B times C. What this is saying is that you can multiply both sides of the equation by the same number, and the truthness of it is going to be the same. Okay? Uh, there is a catch here, though. That C value cannot equal zero. When you see the equal sign with a slash through it, that means doesn't equal. So whatever I'm multiplying both sides times, it can't be zero. I think about this. If you have the same, same amount of money as the person next to you, if both of you have your money multiplied times two, you still have the same amount of money as each other, right? Or if you were to, to, if you were to divide your amount of money by five, you still have the same amount of money, right? So as long as what we do to one person, we do to the other, what we do to one side of the equation, we do to the other, then we're going to be okay. And the other way of looking at this is that we could divide both sides by the same number and we would still maintain the same level of truth here. And again, C does not equal zero. You know you don't want to divide by zero, right? Because if you divide by zero, then your expression would be what? Undefined. I think we've seen that somewhere before, like number, number eight or nine on the exam. Just saying. So let me show you how easy this can be. You don't know about it? You don't think this is easy? Dude, check this out. Hmm. 2x equals 24. Now, we talked about this before, how 2 is a coefficient. And what's really going on here between the 2 and the x is multiplication. Do you all agree? Well, if 2x is, is 54, how much is 1x? How do I figure that out? I can divide both sides by 2. What this multiplication property says is that you can multiply or, or divide both sides of the equation by the same number. So if I do this, notice what happens here on the left side. What happens with 2 over 2? What does that give you? What's, well, what's 2 divided by 2? It's 1. So this gives me 1x, which is just x, right? Because when we're trying to solve these equations for the variables, we want the coefficient to be 1. We only want to know what 1 is. So x equals what? 12. x equals 12. Do you all agree? Yep. Now see, there was a math problem that was on TV last night. Joseph A. Bank, which is you know, a men's clothing store that sells suits, they were talking about they were having a deal. They were having a sale, all right? And this is basically what they were saying. You could buy, get this. You could buy two shirts for $100. This is the sale. Two shirts for $100. Well, how much is just one shirt? Well, I'm going to do some math here. I'm going to divide both sides by two and figure out how much how much one shirt is. How much is one shirt? Fifty dollars? Do you know how many shirts I can buy for fifty dollars? Ten. Ten. Well, we're not talking about t-shirts. No, it depends. Why you shop in the outlet store. They never pay full price. Oh, school clearance. But if you pay attention, if you go to the grocery stores, you see this all the time. 
Did I not tell you about shopping for sodas for my wife? Did I tell you that? Three for ten dollars? I don't want to buy three, I just want to buy one. So I've got to do math, right? In my cabeza. <laughs> so as I'm doing the math, I'm going to take the, the ten and divide it by three, right? Of course, that gives us something that's not very pretty, isn't it? Right? What's ten divided by three? Three dollars and thirty-three cents, but I guess the first pack that you buy it's three thirty-four because they got to make that extra cent in there somewhere. But that's okay; they still got my money. All right. What if I ask you to solve this? I'm just going to do several of these examples, and you will get it because I'm going to beat you over the head with it. And, uh, metaphorically speaking, I'm not physical. I'm not going to hurt you. Know, I'm going to hurt you. I love you like my own kids. Now, if you would just obey, then you wouldn't have consequences. Now, 5y equals negative 65. How do I get the variable by itself? Divide. Divide by what? Five. Divide by the coefficient of 5. Here's something you should never, ever do. And this is where you write it in your notes. Do not divide by the variable that you want to solve for. If you divide by 5y, you are wrong and I will penalize you appropriately. Okay, pumpkin? So then y equals what? Negative. negative divided by positive will give you a negative, and you just have to do that long division. How many times does 5 go into 65? <coughs> 13. Don't you guys ever play around with money? You should. If you have 65 cents, how many nickels is that? Well, I know nickels can be very confusing. What, what about dimes? How many dimes would be in 65 cents? Uh, six. six dimes plus you have an extra nickel, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what's the ratio of dimes to nickels? For every dime, it's worth how many nickels? Two. Nickels. two. So if I have six dimes, that's six times two to give me nickels, right? So that's 12 plus the nickel I have here, so that's 13. To divide by five, multiply by two. You just got served. <laughs> now, I want you to be careful here because you have to pay attention. Compare this equation here to this one. 5 plus y equals negative 65. Are these two equations the same? Okay. Notice here the 5 is not connected to the y as a coefficient. You have one, two separate terms because of the addition symbol. So in order to get the five by, or get, excuse me, to get the y by itself, you have to subtract the five. Do you all agree? Look what happens on the left side. What's five divided by five? That gives you the one that we don't need to write, but it's right there. It's the coefficient of one. Five minus five gives me zero, which is what I'm supposed to have. So that the only term left is y. So then here, y equals what? Negative 70. Please make sure you note the difference between these because on the test or even on a quiz, they're all going to be mixed up. And you have to be able to determine what it is that you're supposed to be doing. Just like on that test, you have to be able to read the instructions, read the symbols, and know what is the correct order. Again, the order of operations never goes out of style. It was cool back when I was in high school, and it's still cool today. You know, it was really fun in high school. A friend of mine and I, we would sit there and we would make these huge problems with order of operations and pass them to each other. He's so cool. <laughs> but, you know, like first you like push up our glasses. <laughs> yes, he was so... <laughs> we were doing math. <laughs> so now negative 4C equals 32. You guys are laughing because you can totally see me being that way. And then later, this weekend, we can play Dungeons and Dragons in my mom's basement. <laughs> How do you get C by itself? Divide, Divide by what? By, by, by negative four, right? And if you're not sure, check this out. Just focus over here. What's a negative divided by negative? It's positive, so we need that to be a positive 1. So when I'm solving, in this case, for C, I want just a plain positive 1C. 
And then on the right side, 32 divided by negative 4 is what? It's negative 8. What do you guys think? Just right? Too easy? Do you feel like a boss? No? Well, don't worry. You'll get there. I'm here to help. All right. This is to mess with you. Negative 18 is equal to negative 18x. What's wrong? I'm doing it in red? So you're still looking for A. Yeah, I'm still, well, yeah, I'm still, I want to know what is the solution? What's the replacement of the variable that makes it true? So how do I do this? How do I get x by itself? Divide by what? Negative 18? Yes. Now notice that I'm dividing by the coefficient of the variable. The coefficient of the variable is negative 18. So divide by negative 18 over here, which means I have to divide by negative 18 on the left side as well. So what's negative 18 divided by negative 18? It's a positive. Now what's the answer, though? Is it 1 or is it 0? Remember, any number divided by itself is what? Except for what number? Zero. So 100 divided by 100 is 1. Negative 18 divided by negative 18 is 1. Over here we have just x. So we have to write it like that. We can't switch it where it'll say like x equals 1. Well, 1 equals x is the same thing as saying. Well, I know, but I mean, is that how you want it written? If you just switch I, it? If, I, if I'm doing this, I'm, I usually like to write my variable in front like that. Okay. That's how I like to. Yeah. Okay. I mean, remember, Finkel is Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. 